Well, I have before me a pi uh, transportable transistor radio and this one is certainly an antique piece and uh, it's in a very poor condition. It was in fact, um, you know, found in a discarded state and I thought that I must uh, restore this. In fact, uh, my association, personal association uh, with this brand, you know, actually began somewhere in uh, the early uh, 60s, maybe 61, I perhaps, when I, uh, you know, first got the uh, Volve radio, and that was a PE340. And a PE340 uh, Volve radio, perhaps, uh, you know, I still consider till today perhaps the most beautiful valve radio I've ever seen and this was made by Pi you can see the logo over here and uh, they had the factory in uh, Cambridge and uh, I believe over the years due to various you know uh, uh, financial considerations they have uh, they have now been taken over by Philips Somewhere in 1967, I believe, that the company uh, uh, was taken over by the Philips brand. And uh, uh, this radio definitely is in a very, very poor condition. And even the cabinet, uh, is terribly broken. And, uh, Somebody has tried to mend it in its own way by a few nails, you know, but that's not the way to mend a cabinet. But then here it is right in front of us. The, the antenna is, of course, broken. But uh, the parts are really old and uh, definitely this, this model could have been made uh, somewhere in the late 50s, perhaps 59 or maybe... 60 61 maximum i think but the model number i am afraid i just cannot make out i'll i'll see if it's possible but i can't make out it's written here on the label somewhere on the label over here there is a model number and i'll have to open it up and really find out which model this is it's written here nine volts and uh, it's also mains operated so it's an ac dc radio and obviously there are germanium transistors in this and um, i can find a few i can find a few of these and uh, well here on the uh, on this uh, cabinet you can see the circuit diagram here and you can see all the uh, layout of the various parts including the transistors i think this is a six transistor set you can see an af 115 over here which is the rf mixer and oscillator and you have the first if an af 117 and the second if an af 117 also followed by the two drivers here of course you have a push pull uh, output stage, a transformer push-pull output, you have an AC-126 followed by another AC-126 over here and uh, the uh, output pair obviously are a matched pair of AC-128 and AC-128 probably are somewhere over here so uh, a lot of dust, a lot of uh, dirt on this settled down so I'll be opening up this radio and uh, you know looking and identifying various parts I think some parts definitely will require changing especially the capacitors over here I mean there's no point even checking them and uh, they have to be replaced and uh, and then we'll see uh, how this radio performs it's a four band radio so this is a medium wave this is fortunately the ferret antenna is intact and you have a short wave uh, Possibly a short wave one coil over here. Uh, so, so much for this. Um, 
but I really don't know the model. There is a label this side also, but that is a, you know, a factory checked uh, label. I really can't get inside. It also looks like some three, four, uh, difficult to read over here. But I'll open it up and see what we can, uh, you know, determine from this. It looks somewhat okay. I mean, uh, condition it is, you know, after so many years, probably it has been totally neglected, kept uh, somewhere. And, uh, well, then it's found my way. Well, I did manage to get this radio open. And, uh, as you can see, uh, it's in a fairly, very bad state. And, uh, you know, there are so many uh, parts which have to be checked. And uh, the AC128, the matched pair are down below. Probably you wouldn't be able to note them. That's where they are. You can see just the two of them, they're held together with that uh, heat sink which has been uh, screwed to the chassis over there. Anyway, this is, uh, these are the IF, these are the coils. Probably this is the first IF and this is the second IF and uh, I don't know, maybe a, a medium wave coil or something. Well, everything else appears to be okay and uh, even uh, the dial cord is still intact and that's a miracle. And uh, this appears to be an old uh, paper capacitor. And in the process of opening it, I managed to break a knob here and there, but then that's, uh, you know, because of the poor, the plastic which has rotted over the years and one is intact still but then i'll be able to fix the knobs that's not an issue the speaker is absolutely in a good condition um, this of course is the front plate and uh, uh, as you can see this is the transportable but there's but there's no pi logo here at all it's there only uh, in the front and uh, and this is this is the uh, information which I was seeking, and uh, as you can see over there, uh, the, uh, the model number is very difficult to make out. Perhaps it is three four zero one, and uh, it is made by the National Echo Company. Now, uh, as part of the history, National, you know, Echo. Uh, actually bought some shares in Pi and before ultimately being taken over by Philips in 67 uh, these radios were made by National Echo there was a radio of National uh, Echo uh, many radios in fact were made here in India also and um, so um, that's part of that and there's a label over here and uh, I don't know what it says, but then I'll have to really check it under a magnifying glass to really find out. So it is, uh, it's saying cabinet okay label and this probably is a quality control label. There is uh, some model number mentioned over here. Let me see if I can get hold of it. Uh, I don't know. So again, it is something three. Uh, uh, it is some model. But anyway, we'll we'll check on that, and I'll keep you informed. So, so I'll be um, operating on this radio, cleaning it all up, and uh, I can see a resistor which has cracked. One of these uh, uh, resistors. Uh, you can see has has to be changed and uh, various other parts I think I'll have to check many clues you know way uh, 79 diode over there and I believe there's an OA diode inside this also that's what uh, it's mentioned
No, whether this is a new one or has been changed by somebody, I really don't know, find it out. So, I suppose a lot of work is required on this. And there's a band switch. The band switch appears to be functioning, but it's very dirty, so obviously it has to be cleaned. And uh, then you have uh, the um, battery eliminator part over here. And uh, you have a little plug attached to this. And there are four um, terminals on this. And these four terminals seem to be going to this socket, yeah, over here. So, um, the problem which I find is, well, I don't know, they, it, I wouldn't have done this. So, they've taken the mains lead, this is a mains lead, and uh, the mains lead is coming, it's a separate, and uh, so there's a plug attached to the mains lead. The mains lead is coming over here. It goes, in fact, and feeds AC into this. And then out comes the DC, and the DC is fed into this. So this is what it is. This is the system. It's, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, to my mind, not a very efficient system. But anyhow, that's what they did in those days. And I can't make out what uh, capacitor this is, but I'll be able to determine it. And um, and these styroflexes are good. Um, they always remain the capacitor, but this one is, you know, detached from its place. So uh, we'll have to look into this very closely and uh, see what we can do about it. This is the uh, and uh, as you can see is the uh, power supply of this unit here, the Pi receiver and uh, it appears to be uh, a regulated power supply and um, this of course is the battery and the mains change over switch over here. But a very strange thing is that there are two silicon power transistors here and uh, one is over here. Uh, they are SK100, SL100, possibly um, two SLs or two SK, I, I really can't read, uh, uh, yeah, one is over here. So they're, they're possibly being used at diodes and uh, in place of the regular silicon diodes and that's because the uh, power consumption of this set is very less i think it's around maximum four to five hundred milliampers uh, at nine volts so this is a nine volts regulated power supply and uh, in any case i'm going to change it and uh, uh, use a nine volt regulator i hope you like this video do see my other videos on vintage radios and electronics. Thanks for watching.